Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of my Planet Zookeeper series. So in this series I am going through a variety of different topics um, from my zookeeper's point of view and just trying to help people who are struggling to make their zoos look realistic um, with a few techniques that I have picked up via places I've worked and visited and all that sort of thing. So. This will be my tips and tricks for getting planting to look realistic in your zoos. So if you've been struggling to make your planting look like a real zoo, um, things like that, then hopefully this will be the video for you. Right everyone, so we are going to start at the front down here so we've got all our existing stuff that we did in last episode of fencing um, and we are going to carry on with our planting so the first thing we're going to cover is the uses of planting in zoos so why do we actually have planting in zoos so firstly climbing so this is a pretty obvious one but you know I've got to cover everything so um, Obviously many animals are able to climb, some of them are actually arboreal so they will spend all or almost all of their time in trees so it's really important that these animals have the opportunity to do this in zoos so um, a lot of places will have a mixture of natural and artificial climbing structures and things like that um, depending on the style of the enclosure so some will be all completely sort of fake um, so it might be fire hose, it might be rope, um, just wood, um, platforms and things like that. Some might be all trees and things, um, trees and bushes and things like that. And a lot of them will be a mixture of the two. So they might have a mixture of trees um, but connected together via ropes, things like that. So um, that is a good way to make your zoos look more realistic. So um, obviously not all of these things in the game are actually climbable for the animals um, in the game but uh, you can effectively kind of they're, they're implied really that they can be climbed obviously just because the in-game lemurs there may not be able to climb this smaller tree here doesn't mean that actually in real life obviously they would be able to climb it so um, yeah you can use a variety of these trees um, even if they're not climbable in game, um, they would be climbable in real life, so they are good to provide this climbing need for the animals. Next, we'll move on to screening and privacy. So, obviously, this is a really important feature for zoos for a lot of animals. So, a lot of animals are a bit more shy um, compared to some. So, animals should always be able to go away from visitors and hide from visitors if they would like. Um, obviously in addition to buildings and man-made structures and things like that that we have to provide this um, this feature plants are a really good way of um, being able to provide screening and privacy for animals as well so um, it's really good both visually and also for auditory barriers so to stop um, some of the sound getting through and stop animals getting stressed by sound or anything like that so a lot of animals ideally would, would have some of this, um, some sort of screening, um, but there are more animals um, that are, can be a little bit more sensitive um, to noise and to a lot of people and things like that. So yeah, screening and privacy, really important feature. Um, it's also a big feature in the game, so in the game mechanics privacy is quite an important um, part and animals do have the privacy needs, so it is something that you need to include not just for realism but also for the actual games mechanics too. Uh, next we've got grazing and browse so as we all know a lot of animals will eat plants hopefully they don't eat that because it's mouldy but a lot of animals will eat nice plants so there's some simple ways we can we can make our enclosures look realistic with regards to this so providing grass for grazing animals so obviously in the game we have the terrain that is the long grass so providing that is a really simple way of um, making an enclosure look more realistic for a grazing animal 
Um, it promotes activity of the animals um, if they're able to graze um, instead of being kept on on hard surfaces or things like that. Um, and it also would, could lead to better welfare because they are obviously able to um, perform natural behaviours, things like that. Uh, we obviously don't have a game that uh, graze mechanic in the game. Um, so even though animals will perform the, the behaviour itself um, visually, I don't think they will actually gain any nutrition or anything from grazing. But um, it's still a really important thing to consider when designing your enclosures um, with regards to plants. Browse wise, so by browse we're talking about bushes, shrubs, trees, all those sorts of things. Um, things with, with big leaves on them. Uh, it's harder to provide in the quantity um, for captive animals obviously, unless they're in really big enclosure with loads and loads of trees and bushes and things like that. Um, but we can still provide some opportunities, so you might have a couple of trees in your enclosure that at certain times of the year obviously, as, as they're growing, they might be a bit low um, and animals are able to reach them, things like that. Um, you might have branches fall off every now and then, small branches, um, leaves obviously falling which animals can eat. So um, having trees in there is still a good way of providing browsing opportunities for the animals. So having a combination of all these can definitely help to make things look more realistic for the relevant species. Um, a big part of this is actual protection of trees, so, which we'll talk about a bit later, other plants like that, so yeah, we'll talk about that later. So, next we'll move to aesthetics. So obviously aesthetics is a major factor in zoos. Um, we want things to look nice for the guest experience. Um, it can be really useful for education um, and just yeah, generally making zoos look good. Um, we can also use it to tie different areas in together, to blend areas in, hide fencing, things like that, um, or things that we don't want people to see as much, off show areas. We can use it for theming. Um, and yeah, just generally making areas look nice, um, really tying areas in together. I'm sure a lot of us will will know that when you put planting in, it really does bring the whole enclosure nicely looking together. So here, for example, we've got the tiger, the Siberian tiger. So um, we've used plants here to kind of mimic the natural environment and the natural habitats which can be good for education but yeah also the theming as well so next shade and shelter so obviously we know that we need hard shelter and um, actual buildings and shade structures things like that but planting can also be a really important way of providing shelter for animals um, so shelter from the elements wind, rain, snow, all of those sorts of things. So we've got trees which are obviously a natural, a nice natural barrier um, and way of providing this and they can also be cheaper depending on what you're you're doing. Obviously it may take a while for them to grow big enough to provide a decent amount of shade and shelter and things but um, yeah in theory they could be cheaper. Uh, lots of animals will also choose to use these um, these outdoor shelter um, spaces so using just sitting under trees if it's raining um, they might not necessarily want to go into their house um, or things like wind breaks um, can be really important so if it is really windy and you have um, a nice little sort of screened area with some planting some thicker planting then animals might choose to sit there instead of going inside too. So yeah, really important for shade and shelter. Lastly, for our uses of planting, we've got enrichment and anchors. So this is kind of linked to climbing, but not exclusively to climbing. So with anchors, we mean anchor points for climbing structures, um, ropes, things like that. So this is a little portion of a climbing frame that I made for my squirrel monkey island in my recreation. Um, so you can kind of see here there's a mixture of all these things so we've got a couple of we've got a big tree there um, and a smaller sort of tree bush thing there 
and these this is used for anchors for the ropes um, so these are all sort of looped around tied around to provide this extra climbing opportunities with the ropes we can also use it for anchor points for enrichment so just hanging items up on branches and logs and things so we've got like a little just a rough example here of a hanging sack that is using the rope that's attached to the trees things like that or it could just be on a, a branch itself so yeah that is um that is another important use of trees and other plants so next we move to positioning of plants so on the fence so climbing plants in the game we've got a couple we've got the wisteria and the ivy um, that is all we have as far as I know currently unless I've somehow missed one out so these are really important um, types of plants for a variety of those uses that we talked about so they're really good for privacy and screening they can be used for shelter so like windbreaks things like that they can be really nice for aesthetics blending enclosures in hiding fences that sort of thing um, I wouldn't say that they should be used everywhere all the time um, so not not to be overused but if you incorporate them into some areas it can be really nice um, and quite natural there is the potential for them to be a risk for climbing um, and escape that sort of thing so depending on the barrier that you're using for your enclosure um, it could be a risk if you had say a glass barrier that's kind of smooth and non-climbable and then you had this big branch growing up it and obviously that provides a climbing risk so that is definitely a factor to consider but it's a nice way of blending fence lines and that sort of thing in next we have through the fence so all of the different plant types could have elements of this so we've got um, this kind of smaller plants we've got the bushes and the shrubs um, bigger shrubs like that and we can also have have elements of it with trees so it can be really important again for screening blending fence lines in hiding fence lines um, aesthetics and potentially browse as well and also for shade and shelter and things like that again potential climbing risk depending on what the type of plant is the species in there um, how tall it is the fence line all those sorts of things um, and also there's definitely factors to consider for how sort of well maintained your enclosures might be so potentially you might have a really a very really dedicated grounds team or gardening team that keep everything very well maintained and have none of this and um, everything's very clean and pruned and well well maintained but um, you might have some that are a bit more wild that you're quite happy to have kind of blending in of the, these different elements of plants there um, inside and out or through the fence next we'll move to next to the fence so obviously this is very well used uh, it can provide many different uses again so a lot of the things that we talked about earlier but there's a bit more of a distinct separation between the two so you're not as much blending in with trees and things like that obviously can be more blending in but ideally you're kind of wanting to keep the majority of this kind of area around your actual fence itself clear of trees and things like that so um, there's still a, a big risk there for climbing so if you've got big trees right next to fences obviously that can be a pretty big risk for climbing animals to escape you may also have a risk of trees falling on fence lines or at least big branches falling on fence lines which can lead to obviously escape too so that is definitely something to consider when you're planting up enclosures for especially your higher risk animals um, you also may need to consider the fact that a lot of animals will use specific pathways through their enclosure as they would in the wild use more sort of specific pathways so you may probably you may want to have less 
sort of the smaller plants on the edges of the enclosure. A lot of animals use edges of enclosures as certain pathways, so you may want less of them right next to the fence on the inside, um, but some on the outside to show that distinction. Lastly, for positioning, we've obviously got away from the fence. So we have our lovely orangutan in here somewhere. There he is, down here. So, obviously, orangutans very dangerous potentially, and also very good climbers. So, things like this, you definitely want the majority of your big plants, or all of your big plants if possible, and trees to be closer to the center of the enclosure and not near the edges of the enclosure. Obviously these can be, as we said before, a big escape risk. So yeah, definitely any big trees, keep them closer to the center to avoid the potential of escape via climbing or by trees falling on fence signs, that sort of thing. So yeah, definitely, definitely an important one to consider. Um, for your, your realism, because um, that's definitely not something you want, something like that getting out. Next, we move on to protection. So, these are, these are really important, so obviously we need to protect some trees, so we want to stop damage to them, because um, we don't want them to die ideally, we want to keep them alive if we can. So we don't want them to get overgrazed or browsed, um, depending on what areas you're protecting. Um, but you want to keep the benefits that they'll provide. So you might, you might still want to keep them as a shade um, structure, or to provide shelter, to to provide you know any of those things, um, potentially even climbing that sort of thing um, for mixed species enclosures. So you yeah but this this really important one protection of plants so um, one of the ways we can do it is raise planters so this one is a good way of keeping certain species away more so probably the hoof stock um, because they some of them are less nimble not all of them some of them are very nimble but some of them are a bit less nimble less willing to jump up to these higher areas um, maybe can't climb as well and sometimes they'll respect barriers a bit more um, if it's not worth the effort to try and climb up there but obviously again not necessarily for all, all species um, so this is a, just a nice way of having sort of these green islands or planted islands in the middle of enclosures um, to keep them looking more natural even though the animals might destroy or eat anything that was at their actual level that they had access to um, so they can be, can be quite aesthetically pleasing um, and you can incorporate all sorts of rock work or walls depending on how you want to work it. Next we've got fenced off areas. So obviously similar to the raised planters but on the level of the animal. Though you could incorporate the two and have a raised area with a fence line around it too um, to provide that double barrier. But um, yeah, these are basically, again, the same thing to stop the animals getting to certain areas, but keep those, those good uses um, and functions. So you can have your aesthetically pleasing um, little islands. You can have maybe certain elements of browse if an animal can reach. Um, you can break up fence lines, all that sort of thing. So you could use a variety of different types of fences but obviously some will be more suitable than others for different species as we discussed in the last episode and the fencing so you could use wood you could use mesh you could use electric um, all of those could offer protection from uh, from various species there next we've got tree guards so tree guards are a really good one so they provide specific protection for individual trees so we've got a variety of different styles we'll um, have a quick look at here so ultimately what you want to do is stop animals from chewing on bark destroying bark um, potentially from climbing up trees um, although we will talk about anti-climbing in um, a few moments you also want to stop things things big things with horns 
can do a lot of damage to trees as well so you want to ideally as well stop animals from getting to these trees rubbing them rubbing the bark damaging the actual trees and the um the bark and trunks themselves so that is why we would do um tree guards in zoos so we've got the frames so frames could be made from metal or wood um metal obviously more heavy duty for bigger animals bigger stronger animals and wood for smaller weaker animals it's basically just a simple frame really that stops animals getting to the actual trunk of the tree um, so just yeah to stop them rubbing and things like that next we've got sticks and rocks so this is maybe not the best it could be kind of varying levels of success with this one it's kind of more discourages the animals rather than actually physically stops them from getting to the tree necessarily so you kind of hope that if there's loads of sticks and rocks at the bottom um, probably piled up a bit more potentially but if there's loads of sticks and rocks that the animal won't bother getting like trying to climb over them all to get to the actual tree itself so it can work for some species um, but it's not a guarantee I would say next we've got the wire so again this could be mesh or it could actually be electric um, electric obviously is suitable for a variety of species and pretty much all species really depending on the height obviously um, if animals could jump straight up but um, yeah mesh mesh depends on the actual species itself so um, depending on the size and strength of the animal um, the uh, the mesh and the wire fences can be quite useful then lastly we've got the panels so or logs as well more again for hoof stock um, just provides kind of a solid barrier around the tree trunk itself for probably more for smaller trees this sort of type with the panels but if you were using logs you could have multiple logs arranged all the way around the trunk itself um, for any sort of size of tree um, and obviously it probably more for smaller species um, uh, sorry for smaller trees this type um, and depending on the strength of this species as well so something like a, a rhino obviously could demolish that in a matter of seconds but something smaller would be fine next we've got anti-climbing so I know we talked about this last time in terms of fences but we've also got it for trees too so primates and carnivores more so um, obviously to stop climbing escapes or to protect trees from damage um, especially you know things like apes that will climb up and rip whole branches off and things um, so yeah it's um a, a couple of techniques that we've got here so we've got the sheet which is quite hard to replicate in the game um, as you can see I struggled it's quite quite boxy so it's not the best um, there may be other ways you could try depending on how much effort you want to go to or piece count and that sort of thing but it's basically just a metal potentially plastic sheeting that's flat around the trunk to provide sort of a non-grip surface for animals to climb up um, so just yeah nothing to grip onto for the animal to actually climb up itself obviously it depends on the animal size and sort of how agile it is as to how big the sheet is how much of the uh, the trunk it would cover but it's it's a technique that can be used um, and then secondly we've got cones so the, I think these actually do look pretty cool um, so the cones are basically act as an overhang the same as the fences um, that we looked at last time so the animal can obviously climb up to a certain point but it can't then go down and back on itself to then come round and then climb up the rest of the tree so obviously they could vary in size and strength but you're less likely to use them for the big species so potentially things like bears and big cats maybe not but I'm sure there are places that probably do use them for those sorts of species um, but yeah they're quite a nice nice little one they can be kind of blended in 
depending on the colour and things. Um, and they just look like a, a tree with a nice little skirt on, basically. Next we've got tree support. So just kind of a couple of random ones here. So um, obviously simple supports for the smaller trees. So just while they're growing, just to keep them upright. Um, is quite a, a little touch you can do that makes it um, a bit more realistic. Um, and also the little watering pipe. Sometimes newer trees, newly planted trees, have a little watering pipe um, next to them. So that um, could be a little feature that you could add on for these smaller trees. Um, and then we've got cabling together. So this is a defence against trees falling. Um, so like falling on fences that we talked about earlier. So basically the trees are all kind of tied together. Um, as you can see there. So it basically reduces the likelihood of animals escaping by trees falling on fences. Not branches obviously, but just whole trees. If, if there was strong winds, things like that, storms then the trees are all effectively supporting each other. So if one was to kind of give way for some reason, then it's supported by the other ones, or it kind of engineers a direction of falling potentially. Um, so that this tree wouldn't be able to fall that way because it's connected to those trees. So if it was gonna fall, it would fall that way. Um, so if your fence line was here, you're, you're stopping it from falling on the fence line. Um, so yeah, that is um, that is a nice little way, just a, a little element of realism that you could include to make your uh, your planting look a little bit more realistic. I know this is something we do have in at least one enclosure um, in my zoo, so yeah, just a nice little feature there. So, final sort of topic we're going to cover is the types of trees, uh, types of planting, sorry. So new and mature planting. So you're probably going to want to use a mixture of the two, um, have a nice variety. So you may have a certain story of your zoo or areas of your zoo. So you might say that, oh, this area is a newer part of the zoo, a new expansion to the zoo, or this is, this is quite an old area of the zoo, whatever your story is or if you're going for a certain aesthetic, then um, obviously we've got a, a mixture. So you could have your newer areas where you'll have smaller plants. Um, you might have the, the new sapling trees or just smaller trees, less coverage, more kind of open areas. And then your, um, your more mature areas, you'll have obviously bigger trees, a lot more coverage. You'll probably have a kind of more compact space um, just generally yeah, bigger, more dense, more covered. You might also want to incorporate certain elements of those, those protections that we talked about. So if you've got newer areas, you might want more trees with these kind of supports um, for smaller trees. Um, and then in your sort of more mature areas, you might want, say, some of the tree guards to really protect those nice big mature trees from, uh, from any damage. Next, we've got biome and area specific. So this is basically if you've got either planting that's related to the biome of the animal that's in there or the area that it comes from or a combination. So for example, we've got the camel here. It's listed as Asia, desert and temperate. So in this, we've just got only Asian desert temperate Asian or desert or temperate um, plants so it's good for aesthetics and theming um, but it might not be realistic depending on the zoom map that you're in and the location of that map especially for outdoor spaces so that kind of leads on to the next point which is the map specific so um, again maybe more more realistic for the outdoor areas so basically using native flora for the location of your zoo and the map that you're located in um, so for example we've got our bongo in here as we will have in every episode of the series um, so in here we've got only this because this map is european temperate biome this is all european temperate sort of um, 
planting and no, no sort of African tropical plants even though that is what the bongo would um, would be listed as so it doesn't really matter for the majority of the uses that we talked about so um, other than aesthetics and theming so the bongo doesn't care that this tree is from Europe and not from Africa or this isn't tropical it just cares that there's a tree there, a tree there, some plants there so um, we can get similar effects from the theming um, for the theming and the aesthetics from native plants so talking about density and coverage and stuff like that um, but uh, yeah indoor areas may be more relaxed obviously you can artificially control temperatures and things like that but if you're trying to grow a tropical plant in a tundra biome then obviously it's going to be less um, less realistic um, if it's outdoors especially um, we do have the game mechanics factor to um, to think about so obviously the animals in the game like or prefer plants from their own biomes and or um, areas that they come from locations but in terms of realism you're probably more realistic going for something like this um, in your zoos um, but yeah it does depend on other factors and the aesthetic you're, um, you're looking for and talking about aesthetics aesthetic is our next point so I think that peacock is going to climb on top of the elephant grass which it did earlier so we've got a little floating peacock so um, yeah aesthetics so this will be designing an enclosure purely based on looks so the planting is all just just based on what you think looks nice so it's not related to any animal biomes it's not related to the map that you're building on um, or the area that the animal comes from so you still probably want to take into account the outdoor area suitability a bit and the indoors again more relaxed um, but yeah it's just in general being a bit more free and just thinking what looks nice so in this we've got a, a proper variety of different plants so we've got North American Oceania African plants we've got loads of different biomes and then we've got the peacocks which is an Asian animal so we've got just a proper mixture of different things here but it kind of looks right so yeah that might be the look that you're going for in your zoo um, next we've got density so you're probably going to want varying different densities of planting so this will kind of be linked to maturity potentially so more dense areas being more mature less dense areas being newer um, is a good way to create kind of different areas in your habitat um, and also to blend different areas in so if you have a more dense area in the center or at the back and then you kind of blend it out to be a bit more sparse um, further out so you might have a dense area for sleeping you might have a feeding area a bit more open or um, enrichment items that sort of thing so yeah it's a good way of creating different patches within your habitats and obviously all of these things will apply to your guest areas as well um, all these different factors um, for theming and aesthetics then last but not least we've got varied types so obviously one of the biggest points we can we can say about planting is to use all the different types and sizes of plants to make things look more natural because obviously we don't just have an area that just has all completely big trees nothing else you want to kind of use a mixture you want some big trees you want some small trees some more bushes and shrubs um, some small plants you might want some climbing plants you might want to use the actual grass texture as we talked about and um, the grass terrain as a, um, a plant um, and obviously we can also use trees sunk into the ground which most people know about to look like bushes so doing doing stuff with a variety of different plants and sizes and shapes and types just makes a more kind of coherent planting and aesthetic um, more aesthetically pleasing to have a nice variety of different things um, and obviously it allows you to to cover multiple um, uses which we talked about earlier so you can 
you can have your climbing with the big trees, you can have bushes to provide cover, you can have aesthetically pleasing flowers and plants, so you can really cover all sorts of different things by varying your planting. So, hopefully that has been a good little discussion about planting in your zoos and hopefully some of these points will be useful for, to help you create more realistic looking zoos. Um, I'm not a, a big planting expert or anything but obviously again all of these are just things I kind of think about, I've picked up from places I've worked, visited, all of that. So yeah hopefully you will take something useful from this and uh, yeah it will help you to create more realistic looking zoos in the future. So as we did last time we'll hop quickly into my Whipsnade Zoo recreation. So a real zoo that I'm recreating and we'll have a look at a couple of examples of these techniques that are used in a real zoo but recreated in Planet Zoo. So yeah we'll hop into that now. Right guys, so we are in my Whipsnade Zoo recreation. Um, the first habitat we're going to look at is for the Gower. Um, so in their place we've got the African Buffalo. Um, so in here the main one we want to look at is the Tree Guards. So these are similar style to the ones that I posted um, or created Sorry for the main part of the video. So just large basic kind of metal structures these are supposed to be, um, especially now we've got metal pieces that will be easier to use than uh, trying to make them look like metal from wood. But um, yeah, just simple tree guards to stop the animals from getting to the trees and destroying the trees. So next we shall move to the ostrich. So the ostrich are down here. So in this one, what we've got is our tree supports. So this is these are all kind of quite newly planted trees. So they have got the actual supports around them. So just some plain wooden supports to keep them all upright as they grow. So that is a yeah a quite a nice one to show that. Next we shall move to the giraffes which are over here so in here we can see the raised planting area so this is a good example of that so we've got all the rocks and things around the edge and then on the inside we've got a nice variety of um, different plants planting we've got a couple of bigger sort of trees some grasses all of that some nettles things like that um, so the actual enclosure itself is a bit more plain obviously giraffes would eat everything if they could get to it all and destroy everything so this is just a nice way to break up the enclosure um, that looks quite natural next we shall hop down into this area here so this is my bluebell woodland so this is something I'm quite happy with, quite proud of. So all in the back here, this is just a naturalistic bluebell woodland. Um, quite a big feature of the zoo itself. So we've used a lot of different types of planting. So we've got the flowers, we've got some extra f actual foliage provided by another type of plant in there. We've got a couple of the slightly s the taller ones, the um, the brambles we've got some logs and things as well and then obviously we've got a lot of trees as well all the way around so they provide a nice nice kind of dappled light we've got nice coverage on the floor there and uh, yeah just different types of plants so hopefully it makes it look more realistic and then lastly we shall go down to this enclosure here. So as you can tell a lot of these paddocks are quite big quite open um, so 
even in this paddock here, even though the majority is quite open, we have got these nice patches here of trees. So there's just four or five or so trees in a few different spots dotted about and they provide a nice bit of shelter and shade for the animals that live in here. So in here we've got Gemsbok and in the game we've got Nayala um, in real life Sitatunga and white rhinos as well in this enclosure. So this provides just elements of yeah shelter, shade, all of that, even though the whole enclosure doesn't have to be uh, completely covered, we've still got these little patches. So uh, yeah, if it rains, snows, any of that, then these patches are useful too. So that is it for our little bit of examples from a real zoo. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for future episodes in this series and all the other bits and bobs that I'm doing, including this Whipsnade Recreation Zoo, uh, ZSL Whipsnade Zoo Recreation series that I'm doing. Um, if you are interested in checking out some other bits, then check out the Twitch, um, Discord, Twitter that are all linked below in the description. If you have any comments or thoughts, um, any suggestions, anything you'd like to see in future episodes in this series, then leave a comment down below. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.